Kristen Rain Wilson. Give it up, y'all. All right, so joining us now is a man deeply passionate about keeping people out of the revolving doors of justice. He's a judge in Northwest Mississippi, as well as the president of the National Bar Association, the oldest and largest association made up of predominantly African-American judges and lawyers. A few years ago, he created a program to give first-time offenders second chances in super creative ways, and that makes him a rad human. to the creator of Do Better ASAP, Judge Carlos Moore. Give it up for me. Yeah. So uh, why, is, why is this so important for you? Why was it so important for you to do this? You know, I always felt that if I got in a position of power, I would try to make a difference. So many times, African Americans get the short end of the stick. Yeah. There are many judges that don't look like me, and the people that appear before them, they cannot be empathetic because they don't look like the people that go before them. But I preside over two jurisdictions where there are African Americans, 85 to 90 percent of pe people look like me, and I want to give them a second chance if they qualify. Yeah. So will you, yeah. will you explain to people, like, how legal troubles disproportionately affect, they impact African-American kids in your community more so than others? Yes, once you get into the criminal justice system, your record follows you. And some of these people come before me, the, the young people just finishing high school, mm -hmm. and I don't want them to start off with a blemish on their record. If they are nonviolent, youthful, a first-time offender, I'm gonna give them a second chance. It's a Do Better ASAP Alternative Sentencing Accountability Program. Basically, if they plead guilty and accept responsibility for their infraction, I allow them to um, have a second chance to do better ASAP. Um, well, can you give us examples of, of your, like, creative ways, like how, how you, would, you would help them? I've had some to register to vote. I've had some to write an essay about the importance or the safety or the effectiveness of the vaccine. I've had some get their GED. The one that stands out the most is Chandler Wells. Chandler was a 17-year-old who pled guilty to reckless driving. He was not doing well in school. He was missing days. His grades were not up to par. He did not know if he was wanting to go to college. So young. So Yeah, so young. So young, yes. Yeah. Um, so what kind of changes have you seen for the people in your program in the community? Like Chandler, what, what kind of changes have you seen? I've seen Chandler got admitted to college. He's in college, just finished wow. his first year at Northwest Community College. And it could have gone so differently. Yeah. He was the valedictorian of my first graduation, so we are very proud of Chandler. We gave him a scholarship, a book scholarship, $2,000 for college, and he's doing well. Wow, right on. And to think, like, how many lives you're impacting in that sense, not just the lives of those young men, but all their family members, their kids one day, you know what I'm saying? You've changed the, the that's a really cool, th is that why, like, why did you want to become a judge? Like, why was that your, like, purpose? You know, I wanted to be a lawyer. I never really thought about being a judge, but an opportunity came available. Um, the mayor and the board appointed me to be judge, and I took the opportunity and said I would do something with it. Okay, so wait, why did you want to be a lawyer? I wanted to be a lawyer because I like standing up for those uh, mm -hmm. voiceless people. I like to be a voice for the voiceless, uh, be a vanguard for justice. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I love your accent as well. Um, Judge Moore told us about Chandler, um, who just finished his first year of college, which is incredible. Um, we actually have Chandler's mom on the line, and she has something to say to Judge Moore. Hi, Raquel. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Oh, you look beautiful, first of all. I love that yellow. So what does it mean for you and Chandler that, that Judge Moore gave him the opportunity, you know, for a clean slate? Well, honestly, it was a wake-up call for Chandler, and I really don't think Chandler had any plans for what he was going to do after high school. Um, but as soon as he got into the program, I saw a change in him. Mm. He was more focused on school. He developed a better respect for authority. Um, he was more aware of his actions. He became a more cautious driver. And like Judge Moore mentioned, he got that $2,000 scholarship. Not real sure what would have happened without that second chance program. Um, it gives me comfort as a mom to have you on that bench. And I have to say thank you. Your program is affecting our community in a major way. So mm. on behalf of me and those moms here, I got to say thank you, Judge Moore. We really appreciate you and what you're doing. Oh. I hope you feel like a superhero. It's like really cool what you're doing and like giving a voice to people that don't have a voice. And, and I think, you know, especially the last two years, we've 
heard about all the injustices and it's one of those things where people either turn a blind eye or just not listening, but things are going on and things are happening and it's really important what you're doing. Like your work is so important. So thank you so much for taking the time to come. Oh, I like your socks too, okay. I just saw, you look so sharp, Never mind. okay. Um, but anyway, thank you for coming here today and sharing your story. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely.